between the name and the nature of God. Those two are inseparable. The nature of God, the name of God. And when you look at the names that God revealed about himself, then you understand that his nature is inside that name. His nature is revealed in that name. Great name, great nature. Good name, he does good things. He's a faithful God as his nature. He's holy because he's the holy God. His name and his nature, they go together. I divide the message to three parts. Number one, the perfection of his nature. The perfection of his nature. Number two, protection through his name. Protection through his name. Number three, praying in his name. Praying in his name. Number one, the perfection of his nature. Yes, there is the nature of God. And that nature of God is called the divine nature. In Second Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. There is a nature that is not human, it's divine, the nature of God. And what can we understand about that nature, the nature of God? Psalm 73. Verse 1, Psalm 73, verse 1. Truly, God is good to Israel. God is good. As his nature is good. He cannot do evil. He will not do evil. And when he comes to you and he wants to do something for you, he always does good. Because that's his nature. That is his nature. Psalm 145. Verse 9, 1, 4, 5, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. That's his nature. That's his nature. And you cannot do anything beyond or contrary to your nature. His nature is good. The Lord is good to all, to everyone. And his tender mercies are over all his works. That's his nature. Whenever you come to God and you approach him, you are wondering, what will he do for me? He cannot do anything except good, something good. Because that's his nature. Verse 17. The Lord is righteous in all his ways. That's his nature. Is good, is righteous, perfection of righteousness. And holy in all his works. He cannot do anything unholy. He cannot do anything unrighteous. That's his nature. He is holy, he is righteous, he is good. And then Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. How God anointed, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. Because he himself is good, he cannot put on Jesus anything but something good. Just good. And Jesus Christ, when he received from the Father, because the nature of the Father is good, that goodness also revealed, manifested itself, healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. His nature is good, is righteous, is holy. His nature, the perfection of that nature. Numbers chapter 23, reading from verse 19. Numbers 23, verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Why do men lie? Because that's their nature, the fallen nature. But in the case of God, his nature is such that he cannot lie. 
neither the son of man that he should repent that he should change change his mind now but you see i've read in the bible stands on it says and god repented what that means you need to understand when you read your bible god has set a principle he has set a law and he says there is the law of sowing and reaping there is the law of cause and effect there is the law of doing something deed and consequence he has set that law and what that law means simply is this if you sow corn you are going to reap corn and then if you sow rice you are going to sow you are going to reap rice and then turn it around morally now if you sow iniquity you are going to reap judgment but if you sow righteousness you are going to reap blessing now if somebody is doing iniquity i don't want to say you because i'm believing now that god has touched your life am i right and then you are not sowing sin or iniquity anymore but somebody is sowing iniquity and god said my law is that if you sow iniquity you will reap wrath indignation and judgment but at the same time his law is that if you sow righteousness you will reap blessing and this person sowing iniquity god said hey judgment is coming and then you change your turn around and then you say lord i'm sorry i'm sowing righteousness now then god says all right the law is still the same law it's still the same law because you have repented and you're sowing righteousness now no more judgment in our human language you say and god changed his mind he said he was going to punish the person before he's not punishing him now again he changed his mind yes from our angle from god's angle he didn't change his mind he still just went to the law of sowing and reaping now you sow repentance and righteousness blessing welcome and blessing is coming today in jesus name and so he says neither the son of man that he should repent as he said and shall he not do it or as he spoken and shall he not bring shall he not make it good that's his nature titus chapter one in titus chapter one i'm reading from verse two titus chapter one verse two in hope of eternal life which god that cannot lie god that cannot lie that's his nature is truthful and because truthfulness is his nature he cannot lie and when he gives you a promise you can depend on it because he cannot lie and because he cannot lie we have the hope of eternal life promised before the world began hebrews chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 i'm reading verse 17 verse 18 hebrews chapter 6 verse 17 wherein god willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise the immutability and change unchangeableness of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable unchangeable things in the which it was impossible for god to lie that's his nature he cannot lie he cannot deceive you if he told you repent believe he'll give you a lie he cannot lie he'll give you a lie if he told you call upon me i will answer you if you call upon him he will answer you he cannot lie and if he says seek ye the kingdom of god first all these things shall be added unto you all those things are going to be added because he cannot lie that's his nature his name carries his nature along we're looking at hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that's his nature unfaithfulness is not in his nature and when you mention his name he'll be faithful and true to that name because he is faithful that promise in 1 Samuel chapter 2 verse 2 
for Samuel chapter 2. Reading there in verse 2, there is none holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord. That's his nature. He is holy through and through. But there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. In Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, God revealed himself for the, his nature. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. That's his nature. Perfect. There is nothing to change. First John chapter 4. In First John chapter 4, we see further into this nature of our God. First John chapter 4, reading from verse 9. In this was manifested the love of God toward us, because that God sent His only begotten Son into the world. We, that we might live through him. You see here it's telling us that God is love. Because in this the love of God was manifested. And so when you come to the Lord, you manifest that same, na that same nature of the Lord. Verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Throughout eternity, you'll find that nature still there. God is love. Throughout eternity, God is good. Throughout eternity, God is faithful. Throughout eternity, God is holy. Throughout eternity, God is truthful. He cannot lie. Throughout eternity, God is love. Throughout eternity, you'll find the nature of God remains the same. What are we to do then? We're to believe that nature, that love of God. In First John chapter 9, chapter 4, verse 16. First John chapter 4, verse 16. And we have known and believed the love that God has to us. We have known. You know it and then you believe it. You know it and then you accept it. You know it and then you put your confidence, your faith, absolute faith. Put it in the nature of the Lord. We have known and we have believed the love that God has to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God. And God in him. And so then we see that perfection of his nature. Point number two. Protection through his name. Protection through his name. Because his nature is good. Now you find his name carries also the goodness in his nature. The holiness in his nature. The faithfulness in his nature. The truthfulness in his nature. The power in his nature. The name carries everything you have in his nature. That's why you can put your trust and your confidence in that name. That's why you can pray. Having faith, confidence, trust in the name of God Almighty. Now the protection that we have in his name. Exodus chapter 33 verse 19. Exodus chapter 33. Exodus chapter 33. Reading there from verse 19. 33, 19. And he said, I will make all my goodness to pass before thee. That's the nature and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee. I will be gracious to whom I will be gracious. I will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. I make the name of the Lord to also uh, come before thee. And when that name comes, I'll be gracious to you. I'll be merciful to you. I will show mercy unto you and reveal my goodness. I will reveal the perfection of my nature when you know my name and that name passes before you. 
We're looking at First Samuel. We're looking at uh, First Samuel chapter seventeen, where you confront a problem, where you confront a difficulty, where you confront uh, the powers that be. And it appears it wants to crush you, not because you know you are so you are so significant to him, but because you represent something that he hates. David came before Goliath. They had never met. And why would Goliath want to touch a small, beautiful, handsome boy like this? No, he didn't have anything against him, but he had something against the nation, against Israel. And because of what he had against Israel, the boy said, I'm going to stand for my nation. I'm going to stand for my, for my God. My God, whom you have defied. And because they represented God and he represented Israel, that's why Goliath had something against him. Otherwise, they never met before. And if anybody has something against you, why would he have something against you? You're just a normal human being. But because of who you represent. If you were in their religion, maybe they will not have that kind of thing against you. If you were in their company, maybe they will not have that thing against you. If you are in the company walking somewhere, and then you are living the Christian life, it's not because you, they hate you, not because of who you are, but because of who you represent. If you are not representing God, representing Christ, the hatred will not be there. Maybe you are a preacher. Maybe you're a Christian leader. And then you find some people with great, great power in their own realm. They're against you. They're not against you because of you. They're against you because of who you represent. You represent a name. You represent power. You represent heaven. You represent a kingdom. And it is because of who you represent. That's why they do all that against you. That means then you sheet the battle to that name. That's why David understood in a, in a first Samuel chapter 17. For Samuel chapter 17, I'm reading from verse 45. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield but I come to thee in the name of the Lord you're not fighting me David said you're